Alamo South Trip presents The Adventures of Ellery Queen. <laughs> Tonight, the makers of Bromo Seltzer bring you another thrilling adventure with Ellery Queen, the celebrated gentleman detective in person. Ellery Queen again gives you a chance to match wits with him as he relates another story of a crime he alone unraveled. Then, at the point where he was able to solve the mystery, he stops the play, gives you a chance to guess the criminal's name. In the studio tonight, we have as our guests Ken Sears, New York Yankee catcher, and Art Flynn, business editor of the weekly newspaper Sporting News. We'd hope to have with us, too, the star second baseman of the Yankees, Joe Gordon, but he was unable to join us. However, Messrs. Sears and Flynn have accepted Ellery Queen's challenge to solve the mystery before the solution is revealed. And now, Ellery Queen, Master Detective, and your host for the next half hour. Thank you, Ernest Chappell, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. In tonight's story, Nicky and I quite unexpectedly become involved in the crucial game of the World Series. I call it... The Adventure of the World Series Crime. The series. You all know what's happened. The Eagles won the first three games. Then the Larks came back to take the fourth and fifth games. And now the Larks are leading in the sixth game, three to two. Here's the pitch. Ball four. That's a walk for Henderson. Fills the bases for the Eagles. Two out. We'll see now. Well, here's the great Sparks himself coming to bat. Now, let's see. A hit will score two runs. The Eagles will win four to three, and the World Series will be over. But if the Larks can stop Sparky again, the series will be all tied to three games apiece. And the payoff game tomorrow, there it is. Strike one to Sparky. You know, everybody's asking what's happened to Sparky. Champion batter of the major leagues. He was an Arkansas tornado in the first three series games. Hit over 500. Won the first three games for the Eagles almost single-handed. And then he folded. Here's the pitch. Strike two. Strike two. Well, Sparky didn't get a hit in the fourth game or the fifth. And today, in three official tries, the great Sparks has popped up once. And struck out twice with men in scoring positions. There it is. Ball one. one. That's one and two on Sparky. You know, there's some ugly rumors around, but take it from your Uncle Ted, they're just malarkey. You know, you've heard them. But Sparky's been drugged. Sparks has sold out to the gamblers. It's all... Bu- Here it is. Strike three. Sparky didn't even lift his bat off his shoulder. He's out. Well, that's the game, folks. Ties it up at three games apiece. But what's happened to Sparks? Mr. Dayton, owner of the Eagles, wants to know. Mac McClune, fighting manager of the Eagles, wants to know. What's happened to Sparky? Dayton's private office. What? No. Say, listen, Weisenheimer, I'll give it to you in plain English. There ain't no more tickets. Oh, oh. hello, Mr. McClune. The boss in, Susie. Uh, yeah, he's waiting for you. Say, Mr. McClune, I want to tip you off. The boss said me and the boyfriend could see today's game from his box. And, well, you know what that means. Yeah. As usual, Dayton's ducking out in a pinch. Yeah, well, the rest of us still think you can lick them bombs, Mr. McClune. Thanks, Susie. You want to see me, Mr. Dayton? Oh, come in, Mac. Yeah. Mac, I am leaving you in complete charge. Going away today, Mr. Dayton? I notice you have your golf clubs already. Mm, yes, I'm running up to the country club. I, I couldn't stand the strain of the final game, Mac. <laughs> My uh, heart, you know. Yeah. Go ahead. I'll phone you the result. Well, it's not as if I were running out on you or the team, Mac. Of course not, Mr. Dayton. Uh, you'll, you'll bench Sparks, of course. Thought you were leaving me in charge. But, my dear McClune, he's had half a dozen chances to win the series in the last three games. And what's he if done? If Sparky but... goes, I go. Oh, he couldn't bat a ball with a coal shovel. Bat a ball. Bat. Bat. 
Oh, what a fool I've been. Of course, the bat. What are you raving about, Mac? Look, Mr. Dayton, if your heart can stand the strain of making one phone call before you go out to play golf, just one, mind you, we can still win this series. A phone call? I want a detective. Pay any fee he asks, but have him here in 15 minutes. A detective? What detective, Mac? The best in the world, Mr. Dayton. If there's one man can save this World Series for us, it's Ellery Queen. <laughs> And there, ladies and gentlemen, you have the beginning of our mystery. We'll be back in just a moment to tell you more. But first, Ernest Chappell. You know, nobody minds hard work these days because we're working for victory. But what are you going to do when you're stopped by a common sick headache? Ah, uh, Miss Edith I, the Fremont Avenue, Los Altos, California, has the answer to that. She writes, I work at the Red Cross seven hours a day, five and a half days a week, and spend what time I have left practicing my music. This constant work and study is quite a strain, and sometimes I get a common sick headache and my nerves feel on edge. Well, one evening, while listening to your very entertaining Ellery Queen program, I heard your clever, educated train tell about Belmo Seltzer, and I decided to try it the next time I got a headache. Was I delighted with the quick effect of relief I got? Why, in just a short time, my head felt a lot better, and my jumpy nerves began to calm down. I told everyone at the office about it, but most of them informed me that they were already familiar with Bromo Seltzer's grand health and had been relying on it for a long time. Now I'm never without Bromo Seltzer. I keep a bottle in my desk at the office and another at home. And that's a wise idea for everybody. You know, these days, you never know when you're liable to get a common sick headache. So if you don't already have a big blue bottle of Bromo Seltzer in your home medicine chest, get one tomorrow for sure. And now back to our mystery. In answer to Mac McLoon's phone call, Ellery, Nikki, the inspector, and Sergeant Veely have just arrived. Hello, Mac. Uh, hello, Ellery. You know my father, Inspector Queen? The inspector. Hiya, Mac. Sergeant Veely. Hiya. And this is my secretary, Nikki Porter. Hello. Miss Porter. <laughs> when they heard you wanted me on a case, Mac, I couldn't shake them off. <laughs> is there anything we can do to help the Eagles win, Mac? Thanks, Inspector Queen. We're Eagle fans, all of us. We need them all, Miss Porter. I got a week salary on the Eagles, Mac. You and a flock of others, Sergeant. <laughs> Where's uh, Mr. Dayton? In a place where he won't bother us. Uh, Ellery, if you can solve a mystery in three hours, we've still got a chance to win. If you can't... Doesn't sound like Mac McClellan talking. Three hours. Give me the facts. Well, Ellery, you know ball players. They're all kind of superstitious. Yeah. Remember how Babe Ruth always touched second base on his way in from right field at the end of every inning? Sparky's worse, Sergeant. He's got a pet bat. You mean Ellery's got to find one of those nasty things that fly around at night? <laughs> Mac's a baseball manager, Nicky, not a zookeeper. He means a baseball bat. Go on, oh. Mac. Well, Ellery, with that pet bat of his, Sparky's the greatest hitter in the game today. Well, not that he's just a bummer. Uh, hold it, Sergeant. Oh. Mac, what happened to Sparky's bat and when? Well, the morning after the third game, Sparky told me about it, but it went clean out of my head. Somebody stole his bat. Aha! If Sparky gets back his bat... You think you'll snap out of a slump, Mac? Inspector, I'll eat your badge in the lock's dugout if he don't. <laughs> Ellery's been asked to find stolen jewels, stolen documents, but a stolen baseball bat. Quiet, Nicky. Mac, was the bat stolen from the clubhouse? Uh, no, Ellery. Sparky was so nervous about it, he wouldn't leave it in the regular bat rack. He took it home with him. Where does he live? Well, Sparky got married just before the series. You mean the World Series of Sparky's honeymoon? Uh, sort of, Miss Porter. So, uh, Mr. Dayton gives Sparky and Lily, that's Sparky's wife, the use of his apartment during the series. They've been living there. What are we waiting for? Let's go. Uh, here's Dayton's apartment, Inspector. Okay, Mac. Really, you park out here in the hall and watch this front door. Huh? We don't want to be disturbed. Go ahead, Ellery. Knock. Hmm. Fancy layout. All right, Inspector. You ain't leaving me out in the cold on a case like this. Bailey. Yes, sir. Mac, come on in. Oh, hello, Sparky. Uh, this is Inspector Queen, his son, Ellery, and Miss Porter. Howdy. Hey. I'm going to meet the missus. 
Lily, Hi, meet Inspector Sparky. Hi. Gee, it's awful good of you folks to help Sparky. I reckon I'm past being helped, Lily. Maybe not, Mr. Sparks. Uh, when did you first discover your bat was stolen? Well, Mr. Queen, I always put the bat in the hall closet there. The first thing I woke up the morning of the fourth game, I, well, I look in the closet and Uncle Sam... That's my pet name for the bat, you see. Sparky calls everything we own by a pet name, Mr. Queen. There's a skunk back home that bothers the chickens. Sparky calls him Hitler. I'm beginning to like you, Sparky. The bat was missing, Sparky, when you first looked in the closet that morning? No, Inspector. That time Uncle Sam's standing there all right. But then all that morning we have visitors, and when they go away and Lily and me get ready to mosey over to the ballpark, why... I opened the closet door and Uncle Sam's gone. How many visitors did you have? Oh, wasn't it three, Lily? Oh, four, Sparky. Four visitors. Well, that means one of them must be the thief. I reckon so, Miss Porter. Uh, I wasn't counting Mr. Dayton, Lily. He's not exactly a visitor. This apartment being his and... Oh, uh, Mr. Dayton come first. He forgot to take his golf bag with him when he gave up this apartment. So he comes to pick it up. Uh, tell Mr. Queen who the other three were, Sparky. Okay, Mac, uh... Uh, first, there was Pigoli. Pigoli? The big-time gambler? I smell a rat. And what did Mr. Pigoli want? Well, it's uh, it's sort of personal. Oh, now, Sparky, you mustn't hold anything back if you want Mr. Queen to help. Lily's right, Sparky. Well, Mac, I Now, look here, Mallory. Sparky's the idol of sports fans all over the country, and he deserves to be. He sets a good example for the kids. He don't drink, don't smoke, a square shooter, but he's got one weakness that's going to get him in a heap of trouble. It already has. I know. I read about it in the papers. Well, that's where the goalie fits. Gambling. Looks that way, Dad. Commissioner had you on the carpet about it, didn't he, Sparky? Mm, yeah, Inspector. But Sparky won't listen. He wastes most of his dough paying off. Oh, gee, I've tried so hard to make him stop. I, I even refused to marry him until he promised to quit. Only he he didn't quit. I reckon you'll have to excuse me. Oh, Lily, be a good girl, Nikki, and keep Mrs. Sparks company in the next room. All right, Ellery. So you owe Pagoli money, Sparky, and he came here yesterday morning to collect, hmm? When you start talking about gambling, Sparky shuts up like a clam. Guess who's outside asking to see Sparky, Ellery? Speak of the devil, Sergeant. Huh? A big shot for Gawley. Bring him in, Vili. All right, Inspector. Step into the parlor, Mr. Fly. Be careful with your hands, you. Oh, I beg your pardon, Mr. Sparks. I come back tomorrow, eh? Well, now, now, I don't know. Might be too late, Pagoli. Inspector Queen, uh... I not see you at first. An umpire's eye, you not see him. Be careful how you talk, Mr. Veely. Sergeant Veely to you, pig. Well, my business with Mr. Sparks, it can wait. I go now. Oh, wait, Mr. Pigoli. What do you want? Well, seeing how things are, maybe I better tell the truth. The truth? You told me Pigoli came to see you the other day about the money you owe him, Sparks. Well, I didn't want to worry you, Mac. Mr. Pigoli here, take care of what you spill, Hick. He was willing to forget my IOUs if... Mr. Sparks, I warn you. If what? If I threw the series, Mr. Queen. So that's it, Pigoli, you dirty backstab. Oh, you you from me. You drop him. That's right, Pigoli. Oh, Oh, it's dropped. Now I'll give you a demonstration of the famous wheelie. Say, Uncle. Ah, that's better. Fireworks over. Now, Mr. Piccoli, did you have any bundles or packages with you when you visited this apartment the other day? All of a sudden, I'll talk English, huh? No, he, he didn't have Mr. Queen. You're sure, Sparky? Did he wear a top coat? No, sir. Okay. Let him out, Peely. Put a tail on him, though. I think we'll be seeing more of Mr. Pig. Come on, Pig. Back to your stomach. Uh, Sparky, who were the other two visitors you had? Who came after Piccoli? After Mr. Piccoli comes Colin. Colin. Manager of the Larks? Yep, and uh, after Collins comes Buck Fisher. Uh, Fisher's the first baseman on your own team, Mac, isn't he? Yeah. Sparky beat Buck out of the batting championship by three points. Mm, less than two hours left. Time's running out. Dad, you and Mac tackle manager Collins of the Larks. Nicky and I will call on the vanquished eagle batsman Buck Fisher. You'll find both of them at the stadium now, Ellery. Good. That saves us time. Dad, we check with each other at the stadium. Sparks can give us the other details on the way over. Hurry. <laughs> We've known each other since the old sand lab days. We don't have to spar around. Well, what's on your mind, Inspector? Collins wanted you, the manager of the opposition team, drop in to see Sparks, the star batter of Mac's team, during the World Series. It's your little idea, Mac? 
Trying to pray me just before the start of the last game? You know me better than that, Collins. Okay. Inspector, I ran up to see Sparky about our bet. What bet? Two thousand bucks, even money on a World Series winner. Sparky bet his team to win, Collins? That's a hot one. Did you ever hear of Sparky betting against himself? Sure, he bet on his team. With his team taking the first three games, I thought Sparky might be willing to raise the ante. At uh, big odds, of course. But no soap. Sparky said no? He was willing, Mac. But his wife said nix. Collins, were you wearing a top coat that morning? Who, me? A top coat in this weather? Did you um, have any bundles with you? Criminy, no. Say, what's this all about anyway? Forget it. Come on, let's go, Mac. Uh, just a minute, Inspector. Uh, Collins. Yeah, Mac? Who you pitching today? <laughs> See tonight's paper. There's the door to the Eagles' locker room, Nicky. There comes an eagle. Um, excuse me, uh, are you Buck Fisher? Yeah. See you out in the field, fellas. Okay. Who are you? What? Don't you know Ellery Queen? Never heard of him, lady. Hey, you're not the new sports writer for the Herald, are you? <laughs> Strike. <laughs> no, Fisher, I'm a detective. Detective? What goes? A few simple questions, Mr. Fisher. Why did you pay a visit to Sparks the morning of the fourth game? Well, Sparky and I had a bet all season on who'd wind up with the best batting average. Sparky won by three points. Ten is Hodge. And I saw him do it. Made five hits in the last game of the season. So what? So why'd you drop in to see Sparky that morning, Fisher? Oh, we had another bet. Who'd get the most hits in the series? Sparky hit like a house of fire the first three games, but I figured he'd fold. So that morning I comes up and I says, Sparky, how about doubling a bet? Did he, Fisher? He says yes, but his wife says no. So what's the matter, Sparky? Cold feet? Well, Sparky says okay. Yeah, then his wife starts the water work, so I beat it. But the double bet's on. Mm. Oh, there's a signal for batting practice. I gotta go out and cloud a couple. Oh, uh, Mr. Mm. Fisher? Yeah? Did you wear a top coat that morning or carry any packages? What? No. Miss Porter, why did you ask Fisher those last two questions? If you can ask him of Pagoli, Mr. Queen, I can ask him of Fisher. <laughs> That's what I thought. Come on, Miss Copycat. Let's find Dad. Inspector, you learned exactly as much from Collins as Ellery and I did from Buck Fisher. Yeah, yeah, Nicky, a great big goose egg. Uh, Ellery, the game will be starting in a few minutes. Uh, are we getting anywhere? As... <laughs> well, Sergeant. Ah, we haven't even got to first base. Ellery, we're no nearer finding that bat than when we start. I wouldn't say that, Dad. Ellery, don't tell me you know where... Yes, I know where Sparky's bat is, Nicky. There's only a 50-50 chance it's still there. Dad... Step aside with me. I'll tell you what to do. Now, you telephone... Ellery and his pesky secret. Yeah. I wonder what's cooking. Oh, nearly two hours since Dad made that phone call, Nikki, and no sign of anybody. You wear out the sidewalk, Ellery. Two hours waiting at the ball player's entrance, and we could have been inside with Dad and Vili watching the game. Uh, Dad, what inning is it? Last of the night, son. Uh, what's the score now, Sergeant? Still the same, Miss Porter. One to nothing oh. in favor of the large. Oh, give up, Ellery. It's too late now. You, you must have been wrong this time. Nikki, I tell you, I wasn't wrong. I couldn't have been. How can I go in there and face Mac McClune without that pet bat of Sparky? Well, you can't do the impossible, Ellery. He gave you only a few hours. What's that? Nikki, this is it. A police call? Ellery! Hello, Ellery Queen? Yes. Here it is. The bat. By the snakes of St. Patrick, it is. It's Sparky's bat. Hey, Sparks! Floyd, Floyd, call Sparky back. He's on his way to the plate. What? 
Hey, how's it Oh, we're behind, Inspector. Same as yesterday. One to nothing. Last to nine. Bases full. Two out and Sparky up. Sparky! Oh! get a hit. Any hit will drive in two runs. And we win. Sparky, take the lead out of your feet. Hey, what is it, man? You're, you're not benching. You're me. fat, Sparky. Your own fat. Here. Now go on out there and use it. Uncle Sam. Don't you worry, Mac. Good old Uncle Sam won't let you down. One side, fellas. <laughs> There, ladies and gentlemen, you have the mystery and I hope a solution as well. Nikki, will you be good enough to introduce our guest armchair detectives for this evening? Well, Ellery, our guests tonight are certainly the right men to try to solve this mystery because both of them know just about all there is to know about baseball. And when I tell you who they are, you'll see what I mean. Our first guest is Ken Sears, Catcher of the New York Yankees and son of Ziggy Sears, famous National League umpire. You can be sure that when the Yankees meet the St. Louis Cardinals for the first World Series game October 5th, more than a few eyes will be watching Ken Sears. All right, Nikki, I'll agree the first guest knows baseball, but what about the second? Well, our second guest isn't a ball player, but that doesn't mean he doesn't know about baseball. He's Art Flynn, business manager of the Sporting News, the Bible of the baseball world. Mr. Flynn has been with the Sporting News for 16 years and has covered every World Series in that time. Mr. Flynn says that the Sporting News has a tremendous international circulation, since so many of its old readers are now in the service, but still yelling for their copies. And, incidentally, they get them. And now, Ellery? Mr. Sears, I have two questions for you this evening. Number one, where did I find Sparky's bat? And two, who stole it? Well, Mr. Queen, I believe you found that bat in Mr. Dayton's golf bag. Mr. Dayton's golf bag. And uh, how did it get there? Well, I believe uh, Mr. Dayton visited Sparky's uh, uh, apartment that morning, and I believe he uh, stole that bat and uh, went out to the golf course to play golf and missed that last game of the World Series. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Mr. Sears. And now, Mr. Flynn. Where did I find Sparky's bat, and who stole it? I think I've got to agree with uh, Ken Sears, Ellery, uh, that he found it in the golf bag, because no one had a top coat. And secondly, I'd say that when the that the person that put it there was Lily, the wife, because when they were talking about if he threw the series and she walked out and said no when they wanted to double his bet. It's the case of that famous French saying, Cherchez la femme. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, Mr. Flynn and Mr. Sears. You'll have to wait a moment to find out whether you've solved tonight's mystery correctly. And in the meanwhile, here's Ernest Chappell, who it develops is up on his modern slang. <laughs> Ellery means I'm hep to the jive, I suppose. And all because I happen to mention to him that when you have a headache, you just can't be on the beam. In other words, you don't feel 100%. But if you're hep, that is to say if you know your way around, the chances are that you know our bromo seltzer gives quick, effective relief from the three-way misery that may often accompany a common sick headache. Yes, bromo seltzer acts three ways, on head, nerves, and stomach. Try bromo seltzer the next time you have a common sick headache. See how quickly it has you cooking with gas. Or, as we old fogies say, feeling more like your old self again. But, Ellery, where did you find the bag? That was simple, Nicky, once I knew the facts. Only four people, Dayton, Pagoli, Collins, and Fisher, visited Sparky between the last time he saw the bat in the closet and the time he saw it was gone. So, obviously, one of those four stole the bat from the apartment. Well, I said that long ago, Ellery, but which one? The important question wasn't who took the bat, Nicky, but how. How was the bat taken out of the apartment under Sparks' nose without Sparks seeing it? Strike one. After all, a bat is the size of a object, 36 inches long and a solid hunk of hickory. So that's why you asked about the packages and the top coats. Huh? Right, Dad. But none of the four visitors carried a package or wore a top coat. Top good idea with a shot in the dark. Actually, you can't conceal a 36-inch baseball bat under a coat. 
or inside a trouser leg, for that matter, and still walk like a human being. Yet the bat was taken from the apartment. How? Wow, one. There was one article taken out of that apartment that was big enough to conceal a 36-inch baseball bat. But Sparks said nothing went outside. Wrong, Dad. Sparks said one thing did go out. Remember? Dayton's golf bag. Dayton? The owner of the Eagles? The one who lent the Sparks as his apartment? That's right. Dayton came back for his golf bag, Sparky said. And, and with the top zippered over, it'd hold a baseball bat and not be seen. No! Strike two! Now either Dayton put the bat in his golf bag or someone else did. If Dayton were the thief, the first thing he'd do once he was out of the hotel was get rid of the bat. But if someone else put the bat into Dayton's bag and Dayton hadn't yet looked inside, the bat would still be there. So, Nicky, every told me to phone the chief of police nearest to Dayton's country club. Chief rushed to the club, found Dayton's bag still unopened, and the bat inside. So Mr. Dayton can't be the thief. And there's ball two. Then, then who stole the bat? Who did it? Well, who hid it in Dayton's golf bag? Well, who was in the apartment when Dayton took away his bag? Not the goalie, not Collins, nor Fisher. None of them had arrived yet. Only two people were there besides Dayton, Sparks and his wife. Did Sparky steal his own bat? Would he deliberately get rid of the one thing he needed most to win his bet? No. Couldn't be Sparks. Then it must be... You mean his own wife? Mrs. Sparks stole that bat. She's the only one left, so Sparky's wife must be the thief. Ah, ball three, my son. The thief take every one. Um, Mrs. Sparks. Yes, Mr. Queen. Will, will you come here, please? Want me, Mr. Queen? You've heard what I just said. Mrs. Sparks. Lily, why did you do it? Oh, gee, I thought if Sparky lost his pet bat, he'd lose his bet. And Collins and Fisher and Pagoli and all the others. I thought that would cure him. But I, oh, gee, I didn't realize what it would mean to Mac and to Sparky's teammates and all the fans. I, well, I was scared to admit Doggone it, a foul. Ellery, do we have to tell Sparky? If everything comes out all right, I don't see why, Nikki. Oh, you're a darling. <laughs> don't forget Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam came through in the clutch, and he always will. <laughs> And there, ladies and gentlemen, you have the solution to the mystery. I want to thank Mr. Sears and Mr. Flynn for appearing as guest armchair detectives this evening. We want especially to compliment Mr. Flynn on his skill in solving the crime. We have for both Mr. Sears and Mr. Flynn a personal gift from Bromo Seltzer, also an autographed copy of my latest mystery anthology, The Female of the Species, and a subscription to Ellery Queen's Mystery Magazine. In just a minute, Ellery will be back to tell you about next week's mystery. Meanwhile, here's a friendly tip from an old pal. Our famous talking Bromo Seltzer train. Why, yes, fight headaches three ways with Bromo Seltzer. You see, common sick headaches may often affect you three ways pounding head, nerves that jingle, jangle, jingle, and upset stomach. So it seems sensible to take Bromo Seltzer which is scientifically designed to fight all three. Yes, Bromo Seltzer gives quick relief from that pain in your head. Bromo Seltzer helps calm jumpy nerves. Bromo Seltzer helps settle upset stomach. Now you can take Bromo Seltzer while it's still fizzing or after it settles down. Use it only as directed on the label. For frequent or recurring headaches, see your doctor. When it's a common sick headache that has you feeling miserable, let our talking train tell you how to lick it. Say, Ellery, mm -hmm. come on back here a minute. You got anything to say before we close up this yes, shop? Yes, I have, Chappie. Well? Ladies and gentlemen, because you had asked for them, during the summer months, we brought you what we felt were the best of the Ellery Queen mysteries broadcast during the last five years. Tonight's story marks the end of these command performances. For with next Saturday's mystery, we will again bring you brand new Ellery Queen adventures. 